Hey hockey players, Coach Garner here from HockeyTraining.com. In this video, I want to talk about some important differences that you need to take into consideration when it comes to static stretching versus dynamic stretching for hockey. When it comes to static stretching, very quick, simple definition. A static stretch is when you're working normally on one muscle group and holding the movement, say, anywhere from 10 to 30 plus seconds. And for example, this could be the groin frog stretch that you see a lot of hockey players perform on the ice when they're on all fours stretching their groin. It'd be a seated hamstring stretch when you're reaching for the toes. These are some good common examples of static stretching in one spot, holding it for a certain length of time. A dynamic stretch, on the other hand, is a more dynamically active form of stretching that still works to improve range of motion. But you're using different kinetic movement chains that are a little bit more specific to the sport and are a active movement as opposed to just a seated, still, isometric hold of a stretch, like a jumping jack or like leg swings back and forth, or like arm circles back and forth, or like the knee hug to reverse lunge, right? You're normally combining movements and moving throughout full ranges of motion and not staying still in one spot. But we need to have a look at the scientific literature to know when to properly use certain stretches and when not to use certain stretches. Static stretching, for example, has been demonstrated to improve range of motion of joints and help with actual muscle tissue length. So this can be great and plays a factor in what is a more bigger topic known as mobility. What static stretching has also been demonstrated to do in the literature though, is reduce power output, reduce strength, and reduce athletic performance, and has even been demonstrated to reduce reaction time within the literature, if done pre-workout. So static stretching, can it be good for hockey players? Absolutely. Hockey players run into a lot of mobility issues. Should it be done to an extreme pre-workout? Definitely not. Should it be done to an extreme pre-game? Definitely not, okay? If you are going to use a static stretching routine, it is likely best placed after a game, after a workout, or on its own day entirely, okay? Is static stretching bad? No, it just needs to be placed in the right time. And this seems to not be within the pre-workout area. And it was not just one study that demonstrated this. Over a hundred studies have demonstrated static stretching's reduction on certain points of athletic performance many times over, okay? So put this into the right area and focus on the areas you need to focus on after a workout, after a game, or on its own day entirely. Dynamic stretching, on the other hand, also has excellent literature to demonstrate that it improves range of motions of your joints and musculature just like static stretching. But dynamic stretching has no literature on it demonstrating that it reduces performance, strength, or power outputs in athletes. This makes much more sense in the pre-workout or pre-game area than ever doing static stretching, okay? So if you wanna add something to your warm-up that's A, excellent for warming up, since you are really moving around and doing something, but also B, improves your range of motion for the sport you're about to do, which is hockey, without reducing your performance, dynamic stretching is definitely the way to go. Now, if you wanna incorporate something into a cool down, static stretching is definitely the way to go. This is how we're gonna optimize mobility and performance at the exact same time by using the right tool when the right tool needs to be used. If you want an example of a hockey specific static stretching routine or a hockey specific dynamic stretching routine, make sure you check out the links in the description because we've talked about this already before. Thanks for watching.